guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Grenda Search for Lost Triumphs. It's a two or four player game in which you're going to go head to head as either 1v1 or 2v2 in the game of Grenda, which is based on this territory and you're trying to gather resources, you're trying to guard these areas, and you're trying to gather leaves, the most important part in the game, these leaves here, which will give you passive benefits. Each player is going to select a specific character, which is based on uh, one of the children from Anoru, who is basically this guy who went and met, climbed the highest peaks in this world, met Grenda, and then his children kind of uh, basically wanted to fight for control of this area here, and you're playing as one of them. Whether or not you're teaming up is up to you, based on whether you're playing two or four players. On your turn, you're going to be spending your strength from your player board to move. You're then going to search locations, hopefully guard them, and then utilize the cards underneath those locations to enact either a battle or a defensive some type, gaining resources, acquiring secret hints, to then allow you to get to the Celestial City, which hopefully will let you get these leaf cards, which you really need. In the game, if you can defeat all of your opponents, you can win, or if you gather all of the leaf cards needed in order to capture or reclaim the land, you'll also win the game. Anyway, that's the basic idea for Grenda. Let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you what you get in the game. Basic idea, run through of how to play it, and then come up and I'll give you my review. So here's Grenda's search for lost triumphs and everything that it comes with. So we'll talk about all the components and then we'll go down. I'll show you a basic round of how to play and then we'll come up into my review because this game is a lengthy game and so I'm not going to go ahead and do a full round. I'll just explain what you can do on your round and what, what is it, it entails. So as you can see, this is the board here. These little guys here are called diggers and these are your characters in the game. Each of these is basically one of the children of the Andu guy and uh, they are basically the head faction leaders for each of the areas. There's player boards here for each of the people playing the game and you're playing either two or four players. Each of the player boards represents a specific color in the top right hand corner uh, and it also will indicate a specific area on the board depending on who you're playing with in a two-player game your opponent will have to play with one of the other opposite factions these uh, on the player boards here you're going to have these red cubes that will indicate attack and defense it will start at zero health will start at five and strength will start at five as well and you'll notice that wherever your health is based on the round is where your strength will go as well uh, reputation is zero each player is going to get their set of guards these are the characters that will be basically being played down on the specific areas of the game board that will basically show you control the area you're also going to get 20 of each of the currencies and there's quite a few different types of currency you're going to have wood gold, you're going to have uh, these, I guess these are crops here, and then there's silver, and then there's some like, some other one here called thallium or thalanium or something like that. But those are the five different types of currencies, 20 of each, and you can basically denote how you want to do it, whether it be five, five ones, and a ten. However, it doesn't really matter. It's up to you. You'll be doing the change. These are leaf guide cards that will go in the middle of the board here. You shuffle them up and place them there. These are what are going to allow you to get leaf cards here, which won't be shuffled. It'll go from 1 to 36, and you're going to be drawing them as you acquire these cards and go to the specific areas they tell you to go. Each of these little decks here are going to indicate spaces on the board, which will have specific events on the back of them here. It'll tell you to do certain things. You'll separate them and place them down in each of the corners based on the color, so blue cards will go over here, yellow, green, and uh, extra yellow. I think this is maybe orange over here. Uh, of course, you're also going to get these tokens here. These are time jump tokens. You get two of them for each board because when you go across your board to time jump, you're going to take the extra token and place it on the board based on where you want to time jump, and then you're going to go ahead and reset this. That way you can actually play in different chakras of the game, and that's because you're going to start with the main chakra at one. Chakras are basically rounds, which means after everybody concludes their turn, you'll move chakra one to two, then to three, and it'll keep going all the way across the board, which changes a lot of things in the game based on what you're trying to gather. There's the defense die, there are the attack die, there are bonus die, which you'll be able to roll based on if you acquire, uh, if you have these specific things here. So you have to spend certain currency, like gold or the blue currency, and you'll get these bonus die to roll. Each of the teams are going to get one of these metal die, which are going to be either yellow or blue. They don't make the much of a difference, so just choose whatever die you want to use for whatever uh, side you want to play with. And uh, then you're going to also have these extra cards here. You're going to have these these cards here, which are like keys. They're going to give you specific items in the game. Shields are basically going to be, this is a different one, but shields are basically going to be uh, 
events you're going to have to roll for and determine what happens. And the same will be said for attacking. Usually they're going to have an up arrow for blue or a down arrow for red, which will determine if you gain a stat in a specific area, whether it be strength or defense or health, or lose stats based on your roll. These stars here are resources that you're going to gather, provided you conquer the territory. And then these scrolls here are specific clues as to what you're going to be trying to do in the game based on the chakra or different areas on the game board. Maybe it will say that the Dwarkan, what does it say, Dorakana land has a battle that you have to deal with and so if you go there you'll basically learn uh, that that's something you have to deal with based on these cards here, little little secrets that get to be pushed through. And for the most part that's pretty much it. You're going to get a ton of different uh, resources. I have a bag of each of these as well as you're going to get these little boxes for all of the cards, additional diggers depending on the number of players you're playing with, a rulebook for the game and the box itself and that's pretty much it for the setup of the game when you set up the game now uh, the only thing i didn't talk about is how the diggers work depending on the number of players you're playing with to determine how many diggers i think it's 25 per player you'll place them down one at a time in turn order until all of them have been placed on the board these are used for extra movement when you're moving your characters across different areas of the board in grenda that is the basic idea for the setup of the game and everything that comes in the game let's go ahead and take it down below now i will show you a basic around what you can do on your turn, how it basically works together, and then after that we'll give you my review. Okay, so this is pretty much the game, and if I were to explain it in a full turn, I would actually only just show you two characters. The characters are going to be based on the boards, but I'll just go ahead and take off two of them. This is actually set up for two players otherwise, other than just showing you the extra boards here. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Like I said before, everybody's got their 20 currency from each of the different types of currency. You have your starting time jump tokens on the very beginning track here. All of your health and strength are going to be maxed. Your reputation, your attack, and defense will be at the low points. Every Everybody's going to have their guards, which will place somewhere next to you, as well as the first player marker. Go ahead and set it next to the player who is playing first. These are the leaf cards. They don't shuffle. Remember that. These are all shuffled. And everything else pretty much went uh, pretty much done. Uh, I already went ahead and set these out. In general, you're going to be setting them one, 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 one as you go around in a circle. Additionally, you can't have more than four in a specific given area at the start of the game. However, that might change as the game progresses. But just for setup's sake, all these cards are shuffled and the game is ready to go. And it's fairly simple how it functions. So choose a player, go first, that player is then going to have their warrior. Let's just go ahead and say that uh, this player is this one over here. Whether it is or not doesn't really matter, but we're just gonna pretend like this one is this, this one is this one. So how it works is you're going to move your warrior and to move, you simply move from one space to another and then you expend a strength and it tells you reduce your strength by one. And that's important because once your strength hits zero, that is going to end your turn. So after you expended your strength and you move to a specific area, you're then going to encounter that area as long as it hasn't been claimed. To encounter the area, you're going to take one of these decks over here, like this one over here, look for that specific one. So this is the Verindon Haven Forest. You're going to go through these until you find it. Take this card here, and then you're going to look at the cards on there. So this one is a shield, and then you're going to have this key over here, and then you're going to have this star. Place them down just like that. You're then going to flip this over and read it. And this one here says, uh, the heavens rain fire on you. Face it by sacrificing one health, or you take your chances with the silver die and add up your strength, reputation, and attack, and then see what the result is. So I can go ahead and choose to roll the die. So I'm going to take this die here. This is the die. It's called the silver die. And I'm going to go ahead and roll that die and try and acquire with my die result, as well as my strength and reputation and attack try and get a high number here if i want which is also cool i can use my diamond power i can spend currency so i can spend four of this currency here so i'll go ahead and spend five reduce this put this in there and take a one out exchanging the currency and then i can take a special power die and it tells me i can take a blue power die i can do this twice and then i can roll both of these die as opposed to just one i'll roll the die and that's six and four which is a total of ten i'm then going to go ahead and add up my strength which is going to be four, putting me at 14. My rep is zero and my attack is zero. So 14, I'm gonna go ahead and check this thing here. So it's 11 through 12. You survive, but barely. Expend five wood, uh, two silver, and earn one health. So I have to spend five wood and two silver, which would be these guys here. And I then gain a health. Now I already have max health, so I don't need to worry about that. 
But now I can go ahead and look over here on this other side of the card. And this says to guard, spend one gold. So I can take one gold, spend it, get my change. One and one. And then I can place one of my characters that guard on this area here. That means I control this area, which also means at the end of every round, I'm going to gain currency based on the number of pieces I have. And this is, means I get one wood at the end of the round. Additionally, because I did the guard, I can go ahead and start doing these cards here. So I'll flip this over. It'll also have an event. I also roll the die and then I'm going to add up my certain stats for it. And I'm going to either increase or decrease stats based on my result. And in this case, four plus four is eight. I look on here on this track, it gives me nothing. But if I rolled high enough, like 11 through 15, I could gain two uh, attack or whatever it might be. Then I would go ahead and discard this card. I move on to the next one. This is a silver ax, which is a useful item that is a one shot use. Once you spend this currency, you'll gain this bonus. So if I spent the currency for this, I would discard this card and I could gain two in defense. And then finally I flip over this one here, which is resources. I'd gain that many resources from the back and also discard this card. I could then continue spending strength and moving to new areas and placing down more guys, drawing the cards to the specific area, and hopefully getting a massive control of territory. Now, if a territory was controlled, for instance, and I was over here, and I did move on to here, I would actually do a battle, and battle's pretty simple as well. It's going to be based on your attack uh, comparatively to your opponent's defense. So they would roll their die, you would roll yours, apply any modifiers, and apply any bonuses from leaf cards. And then you are going to either, a uh, loser is going to either lose a strength, if they have no strength, they will lose a reputation. If they have no reputation, they will lose HP. And why is that important? Because when your HP hits zero, you're out of the game, and if everybody's HP hits zeros but yours or your team's, you will win. Additionally, the beginning of every round, when you reset after everybody's done uh, expending their strength, you're going to re re reset your, your uh, strength based on your health. So you move this up here based on whatever your health is. So keeping your health up high is very, very important. And that's how it works. If you do defeat a person in an attack, you're going to gain their card and or leaf cards that are associated with that specific area. You can also choose to guard it. And that is one way in which you're going to be able to control certain areas of the board and gain specific things that you will need because these leaf cards are also important. Speaking about leaf cards, let's go ahead and talk about that as well. When you're on an outskirt area from the leaf guide area, you can spend currency 10 plus the number of chakra, which is rounds. So in this case, if it was round one, you would spend 10 currency plus one, which is 11 of each of the currencies to draw a leaf guide card, which look like this. And when you look at this, you're going to look at it based on the board, and then you're going to associate the area in which is highlighted on the board. And what you're going to want to do is go to that area. And if you go to that area, you're then going to be able to turn this card in to gain a leaf card. And leaf cards will give you specific benefits. Like this one says that you can basically reroll your attacks against an opponent. And of course, as you go throughout these cards here, they're going to get more and more powerful up to the very point where the last one says something like the element powers are your, your elemental powers are absolute. You can use two diamond dice as long as this leaf does not leave your side, which of these guys here, it's very, very, very powerful. Diamond dice are really, really useful because you don't have to spend any currency for it. The last thing I want to talk about really uh, is basically that you're going to be moving along the board, like I said, expending strength. But when you're on certain areas with these digger guys, you can move additional spaces. So in this case, when I want to, if I spent one strength to move, for instance, and I move to here, I would use one of my diggers to continue my movement so that I can move one more time without expending a strength. And on my next time when I want to spend a strength and move again, I could take all the diggers here and then I can go ahead and move again. Dropping one, dropping one, moving all the way across the board. So that's really, really relevant as to how you can move across the board rather quickly and how you want to set up your diggers around the map. Obviously, as the game progresses, you're going to be spending more and more to get these specific cards off the top of the deck to allow you to get these leaf cards. Additionally, there's certain things in the game that are going to pop up based on these cards here. These are all like hidden specials that you can learn about whether it be you can gain a free one of these guys here or it tells you something about the map in some way or it says on the seventh chakra if you are there you're going to be able to do a specific thing whether it be you get this or get a leaf card or steal something from somebody else so that brings into time warping and time warping is pretty simple it's going to cost you one of each resource to move all the way across this board each time you do that so one two three four five six seven of each resource dropping that there at any point on your turn you can then go ahead and take this guy here and place it down on this chakra area maybe you want to go to the 20th chakra which goes into the future that time jumps you this pushes you down and then you're going to go ahead and lose i think it's a strength and a health 
And when you do that, you're then going to be able to be on this chakra, which is going to help you in certain ways based on certain cards here. And the game's still going to progress as normal, so when you push this up, you'll push this up as well. And if you want to gain these cards here, you're going to have to actually end up going back to this chakra at one point or another, so that you can take cards from here, unless you're utilizing cards from here. And that's pretty much the idea of Grenda. That's the basic idea of it. Uh, let's come up and I will discuss the game with you, give you my pros and cons for it, and then whether or not you should pick it up. Let's go. Searching for the Lost Triumphs with Grenda. Okay, so let's talk about the game. And the first thing I want to talk about is the game is pretty long, right? You're attempting to get all the leaf cards, and to do that you need to do a specific thing that gets you one of these little leaf guide cards, and from there you need to go to a specific area and then complete that area's task or defeat something there. Maybe an opponent has that area, and then you get the leaf card. Other ways you can get leaf cards is by defeating your opponents that have leaf cards in the areas they control and take that from them. All the leaf cards have their own passives, which do some pretty cool things. Additionally, we got these things here, which are your location cards. All of them, for each location, they have, it has the same type of card, it's the same card. So for instance, Lancashire, every time you go there, you're going to do this specific event, and you're going to roll your die, you can use your benefit to roll additional die, and then of course to guard it, it's the same cost, etc, etc. Um, this, this thing here, what I would like to see actually is a more randomized version so that Lancashire is not always the exact same event every single time. But with that comes the problem of utilizing these scroll cards because they tell you a little interesting things about these specific locations and what they're going through. However, it makes me nervous about a replayability because you're going to learn those locations and after you've played it one or two times, you'll know which certain locations are the better locations and what character is going to be the best one to go to specific locations as well. Maybe it is balanced and I'm just not really seeing it, but as far as I can see, there's certain territories that are obviously easier to go on and other territories that are far more difficult. Maybe I would suggest having each of the territories have their own unique card and then a deck of just events that get shuffled and attached to that specific card. So that way all the deck, all the different events are different every single time. Uh, you're also gonna have things like these resource cards you're gonna gather as well as items. You'll spend money for the items, you'll get the item, you'll get the benefit, you'll discard the card. That works really well. Resources though, you're gonna get one resource that gives you uh, one gold, two silver, five wood, four crops, and then this is called Artham. That's what the blue thing is called. And there's a bunch of different numbers there. I'd like to see it cleaned up. I want to say maybe one, three, and five being the main numbers in the game or something like that. So, because it becomes really mechanical where I'm having to, okay, I need one of these and look, I need two of these, uh, three, four, five of these. And maybe you can even do it on your opponent's turn or something like that, unless you need to turn stuff in. I'm not sure. The boards here, the artwork, the quality of the game is very, very nice. You can see there was a lot of love put into this game. These boards here are really beautiful. Uh, the reputation track is cool. The way the health and strength works is also interesting. I like that aspect. Uh, but remember, if your health goes too low, you're going to have less actions on your turn. So keeping your health up is very important. And sometimes uh, a player might start pushing ahead while you have low health and you have to work towards getting more health. Attack and defense will move up and down based on the cards, based on what you're trying to do in the game. And another cool thing is the time jumping aspect of the game. Moving from one chakra to another, they will help you based on these specific cards here, the ones with the scrolls. Maybe you need to be in the seventh chakra in order to unlock the Celestial City, in order to draw a card from this here and figure out what area you need to go to. In which case, it has this little bit of an adventure feel to it, which I like in this game. Uh, the fact that all the games, it seems like all the characters will have miniatures. I have four of them that look pretty cool look pretty solid. The diggers are a cool mechanic as well. The base game as it stands feels like Risk. Now the classic game of Risk but with a lot of detail added, a lot of story elements added, and the aspect of moving through time moving back in, moving into, you know, into the future or back to the past. Back to the future back to the past. Um, but moving these diggers around is nice because it lets you go around freely throughout the board. Playing the team variant in my opinion is a far more enjoyable game uh, because you get to kind of work together with your with your ally you can make deals with other players oh don't do this and i won't do this kind of thing gives that social aspect to this game because overall this game is basically an area control style game and uh, i just I, I had a lot of fun with this one there's just little critiques i have for each thing uh especially the length of the game sometimes it's fine to have a really long game but with these leaf cards i'm afraid it'll take quite a long time to gather all of them i'd even suggest maybe you only need a certain amount before the game ends i don't know how you 
they'd like to do is shuffle the deck up and only get a certain amount, which will push the game faster. Or if you control all of the areas, um, another a good way the work game works with, 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 with how it ends, which is normally how I see it end, is when players lose all of their health and the winning team is the one that has the most health left over. Uh, the board, artwork, quality, all that's really, really good in the game. And anyway, that's the basic idea for the game Grenda. If you have an interest in taking a look at the game, you can go ahead and check it out. It'll be on Kickstarter fairly soon. I think for the most part, people who like a strategic tactical war game that has air elements of area control, a little bit elements of RPGs, um, and they don't mind a longer game, will probably enjoy this title. For us, it was like right down the middle. I just think there's some things that need to be fleshed out more. And from when we first got the game to when we have it, had it now, we've actually seen the rules implemented and changed. So it's very, very likely that what I'm talking about now might not be might might be different or changed in the future. But as it stands, this is basically how the game plays. Either way, though, it's up to you. We're gonna pick up this one. Renda, the search for triumphs. Go ahead and take a look down below in the description if it's something you'd like to pick up. All right, guys. Thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review. If you like this video, like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that notification bell button. It lets you know when we make more videos. It's we do a lot of Kickstarter content and we greatly, greatly appreciate all of your support. Also check out Grenda, search for Lost Triumphs down below in the description, it's on Kickstarter. I am excited to see what they do with this game. Uh, I, despite my qualms with it and the length and all that kind of stuff, I've seen their improvement from when I first got the game about two months ago until now where we've actually fleshed it out and fully went through it, played it a couple times. So I will be checking it out and watching this in the future, especially on the campaign to see what they do with it. And in addition to all the miniatures they're going to be adding to it, I, I'm big miniature lover. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this, go ahead and check out unfilteredgamer.com, tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're giving away games on the site. There'll be one up shortly, probably by the end of this month here, as well as checking out un uh, our friends at everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek, and uh, show me how to win. Three great channels you can take a look at and giveaways. They do more content, even more than my own website. That's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to searching for all the lost triumphs and the leaf cards and defeating your opponents in the battle arena that is this crazy world next time next time